29th of April, I'm Monita Rajpal. This is CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. Making news today. It's a tragedy that's cast a shadow over Bangladesh and it is raising big concerns about workers' welfare in the country's $20 billion clothing industry as rescue teams pick through the rubble of a nine-story factory that collapsed last week. The head of the Red Crescent there says the chance of finding anyone else alive is remote. The number of people known to have died in the disaster has risen to almost 400, and it is thought as many as 600 are still missing. Cranes and heavy machinery are now on site to remove slabs of concrete that can't be lifted by hand. Well, authorities in Bangladesh say they've arrested six people in connection with the building collapse. Human rights groups are calling for better protection for people who work in Bangladeshi clothing factories. CNN Sumnim Udas joins us now live from New Delhi. Uh, who, uh, neighboring uh, India with more and, and Sunima, it is interesting that even five days after this uh, disaster struck Bangladesh, it is still considered a search and uh, rescue operation. That's right, Monita. It is day five and hopes are fading very, very fast, but still rescue workers are still searching through. Police in Pakistan say at least eight people were killed when a man on a motorcycle set off a bomb near a bus in Peshawar. At least 45 people were hurt. No one has claimed responsibility for Monday's bombing, but the Pakistani Taliban have claimed two others over the weekend. Eight other people were killed in Sunday's attacks on political candidates. Pakistan has scheduled national elections for May 11th. Fire department officials say at least 55 people have been injured in an, in an explosion in the center of Prague, the capital of the Czech Republic. A state television is reporting that it was a gas explosion at a film and TV school. Authorities say the blast was so strong, the first floor of a damaged building collapsed. Buildings on neighboring streets had their windows blown out. Greek lawmakers have agreed to cut 15,000 government jobs by the end of 2014. International lenders have told the Greek government it had to get serious about cutting spending. The next slice of bailout funds worth more than $11 billion depended on the job cuts being approved. Italy's new government will face a confidence vote in Parliament later on Monday. Prime Minister Enrico Letta is asking lawmakers to back his newly formed go uh, cabinet. The government was sworn in on Sunday, two months after a general election that failed to produce any party with enough support to govern. Iraq's week has gotten off to a violent start. Police and medical officials say three car bombs south of the capital on Monday killed at least nine people and left at least 30 others with injuries. More than 230 people have died in a series of attacks in the past week. Syria's Prime Minister Wael al-Halki has survived a bomb attack in Damascus. There are reports that at least one person was killed, but that the Prime Minister himself was unharmed. Let's uh, bring in CNN's Mohammed Jamjoun, who's reporting from Beirut in neighboring Lebanon. What happened, Mohammed? Well, Manita, according to Syrian state television, a terrorist explosion earlier today targeted... Mohammed Jamjoun in Beirut, thank you. You are watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. You are watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. I'm Monita Rajpal. North Korea says it's about to put a U.S. citizen on trial for trying to overthrow the government, a crime that carries the death penalty. As CNN's Jim Clancy reports, Pyongyang may just be using Kenneth Bay to try to force Washington's hand. Kenneth Bay faces the death penalty for allegedly trying to overthrow the regime of Kim Jong-un. But There are new developments in the investigation into the Boston bombings. The FBI is turning its attention to what the Russian intelligence service knew about the alleged Boston bombers and whether they shared everything with the United States. Uh, and he joins us now live. Nick, what more do we know about this operation? We piece this together for you. Uh, yesterday morning, very early in the morning, Russian special... Nick, thank you. Nick Payton Walsh there in Moscow. Armed men surrounding Libya's foreign ministry in Tripoli are calling for a proposed law to ban Gaddafi era officials from taking senior positions in the new administration. Witnesses say the gunmen have been there since early Sunday and are blocking roads leading to the ministry with trucks loaded with anti aircraft guns. They're in Tripoli. You are watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. It
You are watching CNN News Center live from Hong Kong. We now know the first two teams through to the second round of the NBA playoffs. And for one famous franchise, it is the end of the road. Alex Thomas is in London with that and the rest of the sports headlines for this Monday. Hello, Alex. Yeah, hi, Manita. Only the Celtics have been crowned NBA champions more times than the Los Angeles Lakers. Lakers. Much more in just over five hours' time in world sport, including full analysis of those decisive NBA playoff wins for the Spurs and the Heat. For now, Manita, back to you in Hong Kong. All righty, Alex, thank you very much for that. Well, days of uh, heavy rain causes flooding across the Arabian Peninsula. Meteorologist Mari Ramos is at the World Weather Center with those details. Hi, Mari. Hello, Monita. Yeah, you know, uh, this is a story we first started talking to you about this on Friday, remember? Oh, with Sicily. Uh, pretty hmm. spectacular indeed. Back to you. Yeah, it looks pretty amazing indeed. Mari, thank you very sure. much for that. You are watching CNN News Center. I'm Monita Rajpal, live at CNN Hong Kong. Stay with us. Uh, we'll update you the news headlines in just a couple of minutes.